Okay, so it's been a little while, so today we're going to do a shop tour, 2016 shop tour. The last one that I did was last year, earlier in the year last year, and it was one of my earlier videos, so it's kind of painful to watch, uh, and I'm almost embarrassed to tell you to go back and watch it, but if you'll go back and watch that video, and then come back and watch this one, you'll see a lot of the changes that have been made here in the shop. But before we get into the shop tour, I want to give you some perspective of where I'm standing in the shop when I'm doing my opening scenes like this. Uh, behind me, I've got my workbench, the tool wall, the sign up here in the background. Uh, used to, I would do my opening scenes in front of the sticker board. Actually, the sticker door, and you can see that here. Um, and so you can see my setup I've got here. The camera's pointing, like I said, back toward the workbench. But I just want to kind of let you see where I'm standing. Let's go ahead and get into the shop tour. We'll start on this back wall that you see behind me first and go over what's over here and over in this corner and then we'll just work our way around and end up back here. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the workbench behind me. This is probably uh, around 12 feet long and this is what I call the tool wall. Now I've got uh, my screwdrivers, my hammers, my mallets, um, the little screwdriver bits that come in those little plastic cases. I've got those things screwed directly to the wall in case I need to go somewhere. I can just unscrew those things, close it up, take it with me. Uh, it's just real easy to do. Uh, in the middle, I've got a lot of screws and miscellaneous things stored in that and those little cubbies there. Uh, back over here, I've got the uh, drill press. Uh, it's an old drill press. I don't use it that often. Uh, that's one of my tools that I want to upgrade soon. But, um, and everything related to the drill press is there on the wall. Pretty much for this for this whole area here, it's just everything's in the open. I can just put my hand on it and um, it's at an arm's reach. So it's pretty, pretty handy. And then down here below, uh, you can't. Okay, there you go. You can see the, see the vise now. It's the vise that Jay made and we did a video on installing that. And I've got all my hand tools there on the bench behind it. Uh, you can see the, the plane that he restored for me. And then we've got, I've got my chisels here and just all sorts of hand tools. Now I've got plans to make a, um, a hand tool wall or a, some kind of separate little area for all of my hand tools. Uh, but for right now, they just live here on the bench. And this is where I do my chisel work and small detailed work. Okay, so this is the lathe area. Uh, I've got this built around it. Um, that's pretty much just to contain the chips. And then I've got a divider, uh, which is here, that's removable. I can take that out and move it up and down. However, um, it depends on how long of a piece I'm working on. I can just take this divider piece out and then move it down wherever I need to to kind of give me a more uh, confined space to contain the chips. And then everything below the lathe is open and it just falls straight through. Um, I did a, a dust collection video that I'll link below. And at that time I was doing something a little different. And what I've done different now is I've just removed the hose from the bottom and I just empty everything out into a bucket. And so it just collects here below the lathe and then whatever reaches that hole that's in the bottom of this cavity, falls on through to the bucket. But it, for the most part, it works good. I've got a sander here on the end of the lathe. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight unit, and so far it's served me, served me well. So uh, this whole setup, I've got also a piece of plexiglass that folds down. If I've got some kind of, I've got a sketchy piece that I'm not real sure about, I can just fold that down for added safety. Uh, but honestly, I don't use it all the time. Uh, just the the shield that I wear normally is usually enough but um, this is working out pretty well and now I've got tools behind here and then right over here you can see uh, is where I keep my carbide tools I do have a few more up here on the back wall you can see through, the, through that plexiglass um, so that's the lathe area and then I keep some some wood here uh, for bowl blanks and then uh, wood up under here as well. Okay, so if you have been around very long, you know this scene. This is where I used to do some of my opening videos, uh, or opening scenes rather, for my videos. I've got the sticker door behind me. I've got clamps behind me as well. And then also over to the 
uh, right here uh, is a finishing area. Okay, so this whole area behind me is my little area that I finish in, I paint, uh, stain, whatever. I've got a little, I've got a sink here that's got a hot water heater on it. Um, I got, I have some organization that you can see on the wall there. Uh, that's got several things for, for finishing and also some other stuff too. Uh, I've got a little stand here that uh, you can see that's, uh, it's a cabinet below. That's where I keep all my um, uh, finishing supplies paint you know whatever and then I've got the fan there that just allows me to open up the window turn the fan on and everything and exhaust out of the shop also when I'm cleaning I'll turn that on as well to kind of get rid of the dust uh, this cabinet back here behind me that's got a piece of wood in front of it that holds a lot of my uh, old t-shirts and rags and paint rollers and and that kind of thing so this whole area is very very useful okay so behind me is the miter station uh, it's that's really all it is. I've got a miter, miter saw here in the middle. It's a cobalt um, 12 inch sliding miter saw. And I, I've, in, I've enjoyed that. And I built the miter station that it's sitting on out of an old conference table. Up under the miter saw is uh, more wood storage. Uh, I store my shop vacs under there. I've got a lot of wood under there. Also, I've got lumber rack above the miter saw. And that's where I keep a lot of the long, um, lumber that I have, two by fours, one by fours, uh, long pieces of hardwood, some old barn wood, cedar, you know, whatever. Up under the miter saw is where a lot of the uh, cutoffs are stored and some old uh, reclaimed lumber as well. Next to the miter saw is the joiner. And there's, I mean, what can you say about a joiner? It's just a six inch joiner, it's a craftsman joiner. Um, it works really well for well, you know what I'm what I'm doing here and then of course right above the joiner I've got um, squares uh, speed squares combination squares T squares levels uh, carpenter squares and um, just some yardsticks so that's where I keep all of my straight edges okay so this is the uh, garage door and right beside it is the door that I enter and exit through and this is probably an area that you don't usually see in the videos but uh, the planer lives here also the bandsaw and I've got a trash can here I try to keep it out of the shots but the planer that I've got is a craftsman 13 inch planer um, got it on Craigslist uh, fairly inexpensive I've got it on a stand that's got some shelves that holds lumber so more lumber storage is a good thing the bandsaw is a 14 inch bandsaw that I bought out of a uh, cabinet shop that upgraded to a bigger bandsaw and got it for like $100. And that's what I've been using ever since I moved into this place. So I've got two tools here that were 300 bucks for the bandsaw and the planer. Uh, just by doing a little research and searching Craigslist and asking around. but. Uh, I'm not really sure the bandsaw is going to stay here. I may do a little uh, rearranging in the future to find a better place for this. I'm not entirely happy because it gets in the way sometimes when I'm uh, trying to cut down sheet goods or something on the table saw. It's in the way of my end feed. So I don't really love it here. So I may look for a place to move it. But for right now, that's, those are the two tools that I have on this wall. Okay, the area you're looking at now is the area that immediately to my right when I walk into the shop. I've got the breaker panel there. Uh, sometimes I shut off certain breakers and then when I come in, I turn them back on. So it's really convenient having that right beside the door when I come in. Uh, also the closet, the door that you see is, is a closet. That's where the dust collection, the air compressor, ladder extension cords, saw horses, those, those sorts of things. They live in the closet and I really like having the closet because the dust collection and the air compressor um, is not so noisy when it's in a, in a closet and the door is closed. I do have a, a hole cut out above the door where I initially thought that I was going to put a filter there for the air return uh, for my dust collection, but I ended up not putting the filter in it. I, it doesn't need it and it doesn't, it doesn't affect the sound uh, that much, so I just left it as is. So uh, the closet has really proven itself to be a valuable space 
uh, if nothing else, for the noise pollution. And immediately to the left of the closet, the dust closet, is my sheet goods storage. I've got a place to hold four by eight sheets of plywood, um, half sheets, quarter sheets, and then also I've got a pullout bin that will hold um, other cutoffs as well. And so this has been really, really handy. You know, this takes up quite a bit of shop space, uh, but I don't think I would trade this area for anything because I really like having all this because it's really handy. And so if I did a shop or I built another shop, I would do this all over again. I'll go vlog style here, so excuse the camera if it's a little bit shaky, but I wanted just to tell you on the dust collector that I've got, it's the Harbor Freight unit. Uh, it's the two, two horsepower single stage dust collector. And then I've got the hoses run over to a separator, which is nothing more than a um, 55 gallon drum with a in and out on it. Uh, again, my dust collection video, I go over all that. I'm really, really happy with this. I did put the wind environmental uh, filter on the dust collector and it seems to help it a lot. Okay, so this is the middle of my shop. I've got the uh, Delta 36725, I think is the model number on the table saw. And I've made a, an outfeed table for it. Uh, this is where I do all my glue ups. Um, this is my outfeed table. I've also got a, uh, a downdraft station sanding station built into it and also a router lift uh, built in and then over here on this side I've got uh, a vise and some dog holes so this is a really versatile table I've enjoyed this uh, I did not do a build video on this because I didn't know what I was doing I just kind of built it as I went and you know it just kind of evolved into what it is today uh, the table saw I enjoy uh, for the money it's a, a good starter saw uh, I've just held on to it. It's, it's doing the job for me. Also, I've got a little cabinet over there and I'll show you uh, under the table saw wing. That's serving as a, uh, a place to hold my sanding supplies, my router bits, uh, some jigs, some templates, and just anything that, I, uh, my dado stack, uh, anything that I might use at the table saw. The downdraft area, um, I'm really liking that. It works really, really well. And the router lift, I'm glad I put that in there. The dust collection on that is um, very, very good. I don't have any dust at all when I use my router table and my fence. Um, so I'm happy that I put those two things in, into the outfeed table. I have used my vise and dog holes. Uh, I've got a video on this, installing it, and um, it's very useful as well. Okay, so that's the 2016 shop tour. That, the only thing I did not cover is the dust collection. Uh, I do have a video on that. I covered it pretty uh, extensively. So if you want to check that out, you can go over and see see that video. I'll link it somewhere on the screen and I'll have a link in the description as well. So be sure and check that out. Um, thank you for sticking around for this shop tour. If you have any questions at all about anything, please don't hesitate to, to contact me. Uh, you can leave a comment below. I will get back to you. Uh, I usually uh, reply to all the comments or at least try to. Uh, if you have something very specific, you can jump over on my website at stoneandsons.net and hit me up on the contact page and that will send me a direct email. So if you have any questions, do one of those things and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.